about if we give a round of appreciation for the ministry at the deaf corner over here. Thank you. They are so faithful, and um, they were talking about my sermon, and uh, if it was simple, I said, if it's not simple, I couldn't do it. So thank you for all your work and, and explaining what we're trying to say. Um, we're looking forward to what the Lord is uh, going to do here in the future. Just a little bit, I want to just thank those that are online with us. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm Clarence St. John, the interim pastor here. And um, thank you for your being online and staying with us. Um, some people are venturing out for the first time. Appreciate that so much. This last week, um, I had two interviews with uh, prospective pastors. <clears throat> some say yes, and some want to continue. And, and um, then our, our search committee had an interview on Wednesday night, so we're on the move, and um, we're looking for the best. And someone made a recommendation to me, and I'm, I said, we're not looking for the C team, we're looking for the varsity. So <laughs> we're shooting high. And so um, what we want to help those that are on the C team find a church too. But this church is... Um, unbelievable with unbelievable history and we're going to find God's best and he's going to help us figure it out. So thanks for being patient. Um, we aren't in a hurry, but we're focused. And so we're going to keep the bar high. Um, I want to talk this morning about you matter, your name matters, who you are matters, and God wants to use you. Um, I didn't get off to a very good start in life. The doctor slapped me, and the parent, my parents called me Clarence. <laughs> so that's not, that's not ex that exciting, but no one, someone said, how are you doing? I said, I'm kind of depressed. They said, how come? He said, no one's naming their kids after me. But now I found out two people came up to me since I've been here, and they said they, they know a couple of kids that are under 15. So somehow we're on a rally back with my name. And so, um, but uh, very uh, exciting to me. I discovered a few years ago that there's a Clarence Street in St. Paul, just a few, 10 minutes from here. So I have to drive by that every once in a while to get encouraged. And uh, <laughs> And uh, so we did a little search. My wife likes to help me with some of the searches and found out that there's a Clarence, New York, and a little town of 32,906. I know you don't care, but... Uh, and uh, might be on my bucket list to go to New York. And then actually found out that there are nine places in the United States and 15 in the world called Clarence. Who would have known? And who cares? Nobody. <laughs> Only one that cares is me. But uh, if you have a name, and uh, I think most of you do, find a place that's named after you and see how much fun it is. Regardless of your name, you matter to the Lord. And uh, before you were born, God knew you and had a plan and a purpose for you. I believe that with all my heart. God had a plan and a purpose for you before you were even born. Thousands of years, uh, thousands of years ago, he spoke these wor incredible words to Jeremiah. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had a holy plan for you, a prophet to the nations. That's what I had in mind for you. How about you? What's the Lord had in mind for you? since before you were born. Um, it's exciting. David uh, later wrote these words, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Think about it for a moment. Um, God has a plan. You're not an accident. You're important to him. 
You're just as important as a person next to you. You're just as important as the most important person you know. And um, God not only knew you, but he had a plan for your days and what you're going to do. He designed it this time, this difficult time that we live in. I like this. God trusted us with uh, the gifts we have to minister during this time. Paul understood this truth. Here's what he wrote. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, among the Gentiles. Uh, God wasn't only concerned about the children of Israel. He's concerned about the whole world. And he sent Paul to the Gentiles. These verses remind me that God not only knows about us, knows our name. He has a purpose for you. You're not just here taking up time and space. God has a purpose for your life. And um, I might just say that in. God has a purpose for your life. I thought I might get one amen, but the, this is Minnesota. I, I understand. I wouldn't have said amen either, so um, don't feel bad. God has a plan. We have a choice. You know, you can actually say no to God's plan. But um, we're not going to, are we? We're going to follow him. 150 years uh, before he was even born, God named Cyrus as a future leader who would be instrumental in bringing the Israelites out of their bondage in Babylon, Babylonian captivity. And uh, Isaiah records this amazing statement about uh, Cyrus. Here's what he said, I will go ahead of you, clearing and paving the way. I've singled you out, called you by name, given you this privileged work, and I'm the one who armed you for this work. Not only, God only doesn't have a plan for us, but he actually is preparing us to do what he's called us to do so we do it well. He wants you to do the work he called you to do with his anointing, with his favor, and with his blessing on you all through. Uh, um, although these words were directed just for Cyrus in this scripture, I believe they apply to us today, and I want to talk to them talk to you about them. Um, God's saying, I've singled you out. I like that. I, I like to say, you're the man. <laughs> you're the lady. The Lord is called. He's got his hand on you. Uh, God is asking you to do something for him in this world. Uh, for your job, you're the number one draft pick. Talk about the draft picks, all these sports. You're the number one draft pick for what God's calling you to do. And no one else can do it like you can do it. I called you by name. He knows your name. I've given you this privileged work. You get to do it. It's a privilege to serve the Lord. It's not, it's not a drag. He said, I'm the one that armed you for the work. I will prepare you. I have prepared you. You are ready. You know, you're ready for the job that God's assigned you for. I'm going ahead of you clearing and paving the way. God is already in our future. You believe that? God is in tomorrow. Uh, I want to break these points down a little bit and briefly re refer to them, not necessarily in the order uh, that they're written. But um, Now, you're a parent. You might not have known the name of, of your um, child before it was born. You're kind of some of you knew what, what sex it was and so forth and so on, but when you saw the baby, some of you even changed the name when you saw the baby, and so um, God knew before you were born what your name was. We have a son named Kirby. Um, we were going to call him Electrolux, but that was so popular that year <laughs> that we called him, called him Kirby, and so... Um, some of you that are young don't know that Electro, Electrolux and Kirby are, are um, vacuum cleaners. And then we, we uh, I thought of a commercial, but I never had the drive to kind of put it together. But I thought this commercial have Kirby written on my son's shirt. He's sitting on the floor. It's just a mess all around him. And say, our Hoover picks up after our Kirby. But 
I never got it. Um, I never got a patent on it, so I didn't try it. At a, we like to have fun with his name, and and uh, other people liked it so well they asked Vicky, "Can we name our son after Kirby?" Well, he's got an advantage I don't. <laughs> my dad thought our names mattered. I remember when I got my letter jacket. You know, you come walking in with your letter jacket. Thought I was hot stuff. And Dad said, turn around. So I turned around. And on my letter jacket, it said St. James, because that was the town I was from. And on the front, it said St. John. (laughs) St. James and St. John. At that time, there was not a saint in between those two names. But there, (laughs) I said, uh, my dad said, just remember, you're carrying my name all over town. And he said, you're carrying the town's name. I was just down to St. James this week to my cousin's funeral and um, saw some people that uh, we didn't make the name proud always. And so my dad, uh, but I just got this thought. If you're a Christian and you say you are, just remember you're carrying Jesus' name all over town. So watch how you act. Watch how you live. Watch what you do. And so... um, as Christians, we're representing the King of Kings. And so, um, Vicki said, don't do stupid things. She's here. I'll have to live with this afterwards. But um, how many know your name? Way over half of us. <laughs> That's amazing. So, um, what I want to do now, and you don't have to do this out loud, but I wish you'd at least do it in your mind, and some of you have the great courage to do it out loud. But I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say Clarence matters to God. I'm gonna say it twice, and I want you to say your name out. You know what, I'd like you to think about while you're here that you actually matter to God. That's a good idea. And so, I'm gonna say Clarence matters to God twice, and I want you to, don't say Clarence, Say your name if you know it. Say your name. and Because uh, I, th- I think sometimes we think that God, it's important that someone else is important to God, but actually every person here is very important to God, just as important as a person next to you or just as important as I am. So here we go. Ready? Clarence is important to God. Clarence is important to God. Now, those of you that didn't say it out loud, did you say it in your mind? doesn't matter. But anyway, this isn't a, something to make you feel guilty. It's something to make you think, I matter to God. Wow. Now, that's, um, that's something. Honey, it's stupid, and I did it in church. <laughs> Heaven knows all about you. God not only knows your name, he knows where you live. He knows your zip code. He knows your cell number. He knows your email. And he loves you just like you are. God knows about you, all about you. He knows your hidden secrets. He knows your successes. He knows your sin. And he's there to help you through the problems and the trials of your life. He wants to be of help. Some say, not me, I'm too bad. There isn't such a thing. God loves everyone the same. And uh, Paul put it this way, and my grandson, who's coming back today to go to North Central, uh, he, he gave me the word on the street one Christmas so I would understand how the young people think. And here's what Paul says from the word on the street. Okay, uh, so maybe I'm the lowest of the crew, but God was generous with me. He headhunted me, uh, headhunted me for the job of giving, getting through to the non-Jews. God is a great headhunter. He's the greatest of all times. He headhunts and uh, singles us out. I like this. 
You can't hide from him. He knows where you are. No, you look better than that, actually. But God knows who we are, where we are. He finds us in the group, and he cares about you. He cares about how you live and what you do. Uh, I like to use that verse that we used last week one more time. For the eyes of the Lord run to and flow throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. You know what? All of us here, we all want to be loyal to the Lord, don't we? We all want to be loyal. So we're all together on that thought. Scripture records how God searched out Gideon and David and a multitude of other people, and not just looking for the superstar. God isn't just looking for the superstar. He's not looking for the superheroes. He's looking for the everyday heroes. That's you. That's me. Everyday heroes who will step up to the plate and do what God's asked them to do. All God's asking you to do is what he's asked you to do. It's pretty simple. You don't have to be anybody else. Just be you. He loves you just the way you are. When God singles us out, he has a purpose for us. And uh, he has a privileged work for us to do. No one can do what you're called to do. And uh, what is your privileged work? Maybe it's raising your family in this season of your life. Uh, Maybe it's working in our nursery or our preschool or being a good worker at work or being a good boss. Um, I was talking to someone this week and they were telling me about the best boss they ever had. Well, if you're a boss, why don't you be the best boss someone ever had? Uh, our neighbor, uh, our neighbors have been so good to us. And uh, while we were gone, one of our neighbors disappeared to Florida. And uh, I texted him this week. I said, I already miss you because we're supposed to be the best neighbors and the best people that we can be. <clears throat> if you're doing something for God, it's a privileged work. Why don't you just live your life for God and whatever you do? Now, my mom, there were six of us in our family, and um, I was going to talk about your family, but I didn't know your family that well, so I'll just talk about mine. But uh, there were six of us in our family, and my mom called all of us into the ministry. How many of you mothers have, you know, been guilty or uh, positive like that, I should say? But uh, <laughs> God only called one of us. Now, all, five out of six of us went to North Central Bible College because well, mom told us we were, you know what I mean? And so um, all of my siblings are in ministry, but they're not all in full-time ministry. I just want to say all of you are in ministry to the Lord one way or another. Uh, my, my oldest uh, sister, Mary, and her husband, they're 85 years old, but they spent 25 years of their life traveling from church to church. Even, they actually um, did a bid on this church for ceilings. My, my brother-in-law put in ceilings, and he spent 25 years working free, going with his RV, living in the parking lot of churches and campgrounds, and... Um, so he was working for the Lord. My sister, Elda, she's just a servant blessing. You wouldn't even know she's there, but she's always cleaning up, always there to serve food, always there on all kinds of things. My brother, Carl, uh, I was with him this week, fifth, over 50 years at the same church, serving on the board, being faithful for whatever it is. The church can go up, the church can go down. He's going to be there. And then I got a sister, Carol, who's... Uh, very faithful to their, their great Lutheran church that they're in. My brother Greg, I like to say, I like to introduce him. He's 6'4". He used to weigh about 380, but now he's down to a normal weight. But uh, I used to say, this is my little brother. <laughs> and, uh, but he's in charge of debt reduction in the church he's in. They're going to pay off their whole church debt before they make their next step in the pastor asked him to lead that. Uh, they are called to serve the Lord. I'm called in a different way. They're called in their way. You are called. You are called in this church. And don't just say, not me. 
Yeah, you're called. God's called you. He's using you. Uh, when I begin pastoring, my privileged work, whatever God's called you to do is your privileged work. My privileged work was mowing the lawn, being a janitor, painting, driving the church bus. That was my privileged work. And every time that I wasn't appreciating the, the, the opportunity, the Lord would say, are you doing this for me? Or are you just doing it for the church? We're not doing this for the church. We're doing it for him. Whatever we do, we're doing it for him. And uh, my privileged work still includes some of those things. Uh, God called Vicki and I to four people, four adults uh, up in Hibbing. I didn't see it as insignificant. I thought it was a call from heaven. And uh, it was exciting for us to do that. Uh, friends would come through. And uh, up on the Iron Range, there's a little different feeling up there. I don't know if you've been up there or not, but uh, some people think there's a little different feeling. Someone, they would say to us, can't you feel the oppression, the depression? No, we didn't because we were called there. It was our calling. It didn't even get to us because people had prayed for us and people had helped us and God was with us. And um, when God calls you to something, it's considered a privilege and uh, revel in it. Uh, don't act like you're a martyr because you're doing some menial ministry because it's for the Lord. Step up and minister with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. My mom was dying with cancer, and uh, this is just the stubborn German that I have in me and mom had. And so she'd come to church and go to the nursery, hold the babies, sit on the floor, and people would come in and say, Tilly, you're dying with cancer. You don't have to do this. She said, I can still do it. Whatever we can do, we should do with all of our heart. My dad was... Um, he sacked feet at the elevator. And that was great for me because he met all the good farmers and he would pick out the best farmers and say, I know some boys that can work for you. <laughs> we got good jobs because dad was sacking feet. But he wanted to go to Bible college, but he had already had four girls and two boys and he just couldn't go. But all of his life, he put his whole heart into the church. And um, when he was 70, he said to me one day, I'm gonna start a young adult class in our church because we're not keeping them. I said, well, have you told the pastor? <laughs> That's a good idea to don't start something without talking to the pastor. And he said, oh yeah, I should do that, you know. And I said, maybe the pastor doesn't want you to. So a couple months later, he said, I started that young adult class. There were three people in it. A few years later, there were 20. Dad was 73, still teaching. And uh, don't think you're too old. You know, our age is all in our head. I still think I'm young. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, laugh at me, but I'm going to still think it anyway. And you don't intimidate me when you laugh at me. I just think you're blessing me, so thank you. Don't say, I just do this. Don't say that. Not in the Lord's work. Say, I get to do this. And I'm doing it with all my heart, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Remember that it, it, uh, it's a kingdom work, and it's a privilege, whatever God's called us to do, to do. And God not only calls us by name, but he singles us out. He gives us a privilege work, but he also gets us ready for the task. Hallelujah. He gets you ready for whatever he's called you to. And um, where God guides, he provides. Isn't that good? Those he calls, he enables. So he's got a call on you. He's got something for you to do in your life and in your journey. And um, you are being equipped from heaven right now for what God's called you to do. Um, you may, may not realize it at this time, but life is filled with all kinds of things every day that are actually opportunities that are preparing us for the next step. When I went to Hibbing, I didn't have a 
much of an outreach in the community, so I started playing sports with, with the people that weren't from church and uh, coached my kids and found ways to get into the community. And uh, we didn't realize, in our, you know, that we found out that the hockey world isn't an, isn't an evangelistic um, association. <laughs> and so some of those people are, are rough and some of them are great and so we got to fix it, fit in. And so we didn't realize that we had no idea that Kirby's uh, ability would get him into an unusual place. Uh, but just his, just his skills and act, pretty soon he was coaching the varsity team at Cold Spring on their hockey team for the girls. And uh, pretty soon he was kind of received in the school as an okay person just because God put him there through the hockey program. And um, it's hard uh, to get in to places that you want to go, but God will get you there, and God will help you to be there. Um, someone, there's some things, there are hard things in life, and there are blessings in life, and someone put it this way, the only difference between the stepping stone and the stumbling block is the way that in which you use them. I like to, uh, I like to say, maybe God wants to use this as a stepping stone for my life. And so, uh, at family camp a few years ago, the president of North Central Bible College, uh, Scott Hagen, was sharing this. He said, um, "My 12 years of school from from grade from first grade." to my senior year, I went to 18 different schools. Now, we were boring, I went to the same one, you know. But he said, um, as I look back, as painful as it was, it prepared me to figure out how to make it in every new setting, and so now I'm ready to be the president of North Central because I went through all those things in the past. Some of the things you've been going through has got you ready for the next journey, and um, now this, this was an Assembly of God church, so you won't probably believe this, but there was an angry person in our church that um, kind of would always, you know, he wasn't against me, he was just against everything I was working on. <laughs> and so I figured out a way, as God would help us, to figure out how to work with that. And you know what, it got me ready for going down to the district office because we had some deals to work on. In fact, um, sometimes I left the office one day and didn't know what was going to happen to go into one of those difficult situations. The financial hardships that young pastors have, and there's no way to get away. What we, what Vicki and I experienced up in Hibbing, God gave us a heart to provide a way when we were superintendents for a young pastor to get away where it didn't cost him anything except the gas to get there. And um, when we were sometimes going backwards in our church finances and we had to believe God for thousands of dollars to come through and it always happened, it prepared me for the job I have right now uh, of raising $7 million for our Bible camp in our swimming pool. We're going to put a motel up. And uh, our superintendent says, I believe God called you to do this. Oh, really? <laughs> it's been working. We're at five and a quarter million, and we're going to get our new swimming pool up at camp because we're, we're putting kids on the floor at camp right now. We can't do that anymore. Oh, my last point. And there are so many people that are just sitting on the edge of their chair every Sunday saying, waiting for my last point. Well, this is it. So, God calls us by name. He singles us out. He gives us a privileged work. He arms us for the task. He also does one more pretty incredible thing. He's ahead of us. He's in tomorrow. He goes before you, preparing the way. God is in tomorrow. 
He's already where you're going next. I like that. He knows the steps of faith it's going to take. He knows the heartaches it's going to take for you to fulfill his plan for your life. He knows the joy and the th thrill of serving you. When we went to the Iron Range, we discovered that God was already there. I told you about one of the guys. Um, June and July, he went to the church every Sunday and sat outside at 10 o'clock and said, God, would you bring a new pastor? I told you about that last week. But there was a lady um, who called me up. Her name was Florence Anderson. And Florence called me probably six months into the time that we were at the church. And um, she said, hi, I'm Florence Anderson. I'm a school teacher here at the school. I've been teaching Sunday school in my church for 29 years, and I've been praying for a, a revival for Hibbing for 29 years. I'm not going to come to your church. So why did you call? Join the 18,641 other people that aren't coming to our church. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. She said, I'm not coming to your church. But I believe, that, you know, there are people, she said, I've been praying for revival. I believe God brought you here to make a spiritual impact on this community, and I'm going to keep praying for you every day. So we had those two. Got a letter from New Jersey in, a, I don't remember, several, two or three months into our ministry there. And um, it was addressed to the pastor of the Hibbing Assembly of God Church. It read something like this. I was praying one day and God laid a town of Hibbing, Minnesota on my heart. I just want you to show, God goes ahead of us. He doesn't just do that for me. He's going ahead for you. Whatever your next thing is, he probably laid it on someone's heart. Here's what he said. I've never heard of it before, so I looked it up on the map to see if there was really a Hibbing, Minnesota. So I found it. And then he said, I didn't know if there was Assembly of God Church there, so I called the telephone company. You couldn't do that nowadays because it doesn't work that way. But I called the telephone company, and they said there was an Assembly of God Church there. If he'd have called two months earlier, there wouldn't have been. He says, I don't know who you are or anything about you, but I want you to know God specifically laid you on our heart. So you might be getting ready to do something that God has already got people praying for you. They might never know about it. Evangelist comes through a couple years later from New Jersey. I said, hey, we got this letter from New Jersey. You ever heard of this guy? He said, I've heard of him. He's an intercessor. If he said he was praying for you, he's still praying for you now. Unbelievable how God goes before us and God is already in tomorrow. Uh, there's incredible power that comes with the fact that you know someone's on the team with you praying for you, even though you don't know him. It helps us walk in confidence, and the obstacles that come our way don't trip us up as easily. And so I've got a word for this church. God is in tomorrow. I, f I forgot to tell you this. This isn't your church. It's his. This is God's church. Hallelujah. And we get to be a part of God's church. Well, I'm glad you're here. That helps us. It is your church that way, but this is God's church. And he's in tomorrow. And he's going to bring us the best. Um, and I'm going to be here to guard and watch so that happens. It's my job. God is still singing, signaling people out, calling them by name. There are seven different people in scripture that God called them twice. And so if God calls your name twice, get ready for something exciting. Here's what he did. He called Abraham. Abraham put his son on the altar, was going to sacrifice him. He raised his hand to kill him. And God said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, there's a ram caught in the thicket. Use the ram. God was there. Jacob uh, was afraid to take his family to Egypt. And God said, Jacob, Jacob, it's going to be okay. 
God called Moses out of the burning bush. He was on the other side of the desert for 40 years, and God calls him back to action. Some of you might be getting called back to action. Who knows what God's doing for you? Um, some of my friends graduated a couple years from before me, and uh, we were down to St. James, and they were, uh, they were telling me that they retired at 58, and I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> they said, well, when are you going to retire? I said, what would I retire from? And uh, they said, uh, why don't you do something that would be fun? I said, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm enjoying every day, and I'm enjoying doing what God's called me to do. And so I'm doing what's fun for me because I'm in what God wants me to be. So um, I'm not leaving. God called Samuel, Samuel, little boy, never knew the voice of God. It was a time when God wasn't speaking to people and God started talking to this little kid in the darkest moments of the history of that, con of that country and God said, Samuel, Samuel. Jesus gently said, Martha, Martha, you're worried about too many things, Martha. Don't be so worried, I'll help you. He called Peter twice. Peter needed someone to call him because Peter was going to deny him. And the Lord said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to help you. And so um, perhaps you're here this morning and God's trying to get your attention. I hope I can be a part of God helping get your attention from time to time and him speaking to your heart. And... Um, Perhaps you're like Abraham and you're in your greatest trial. God's going to call you and say, I'm going to help you. Or maybe you're like Jacob and you're paralyzed with fear. God's going to help you. Maybe you're like Moses and you're, he's calling you back to action. Hello, I'm calling you back to action. Maybe you're like Samuel and you're sensing his voice for the very first time. That's really exciting. It's really exciting. And maybe you're like Martha and you're just worried about everything. The Lord wants to help us with that. Maybe you're like Peter and you're going to make a mistake, but God's going to build the whole church around you and who you are. And so um, if our music team could come, God's going to help us. Uh, thank you. I know that... Um, our music team is doing a great job for us. And um, but this morning, I sense that God is calling you by name. It might be the first time. It might be the second time. It might be the 20th time. We want to respond. Amen. Stand with me, would you please? Our prayer team is coming. You might need prayer for something very simple. This is a church of the altar. And we're going to believe that God's going to use you today. You leaders, here you are. God's going to answer some of your prayers today. Let me just go over that list real quick one more time. Abraham was in the middle of a great trial. Jacob was paralyzed with fear. Moses was being called back to action. Samuel was hearing God's voice for the very first time. Martha was concerned about too many things, and Peter was always getting himself in trouble, but God was there. As you sing, why don't you come find a place to put your burden on the heart of the Lord, and he'll help you. This too shall pass. I leave it all in your hands, and I will say, God has a it is well with word of help soul. for you. And when the trial still stands, your love will be my defense, and I will sing, It is well with my soul. Too 
and new. We come with different things in our spirit. We come because you're ready to use uh, us to work for you. I pray that you would guide each person. I pray that you would help us as you single us out and call us by name. I pray, Lord, that you would give us a privileged work to serve you with all of our hearts, with all of our lives. I thank you that you've got us ready for the work that you've called us to do. I praise you for that. I thank you that you're going ahead of us. You're going to help us. We pray that you would take us to our world this week, to our neighbors, to our family, to our friends, to our work partners. Help us to make an impact on our world. We love you, Jesus. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.